Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor for episode 99. I'm your host. Thanks for very much for tuning in. As you can see, it's another car review show and outside lovely heat of Caledon, Ontario, where I do my reviews. A little bit windy today. I got a bad hair thing going, but I got a haircut coming next week, so it can't come soon enough. My first one in like eight months or something. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in and putting up with me. I've got a great car that I'm going to review today, give you my impressions on, a model year 2020 Hyundai Ioniq, uh, all electric, of course. Now, I've had this car for almost a week, and the initial, uh, you know, verdict on this car is it's wow the range but i'm going to get into that so let me tell you a little bit more about the vehicle itself the hyundai ionic has been around for a couple of years in an all electric version and the 2020 model year adds some enhancements from an exterior design perspective it comes with new distinctive pattern on the closed grill of the electric model now you can love or hate this grill i've heard some comments from both uh, but that's what it is and of course we don't really need grills on electric cars because we don't have radiators and we have a very small radiator but we don't need all that cooling that a normal internal combustion engine makes needs so we have a closed grill in most cases so it has that new pattern new front and rear bumper uh, fascia fascias as well led headlights tail lights and daytime running lamps are standard now on the 2020 model year new wheel designs and new side sill moldings that's a mouthful to say now, from the interior perspective, there are some design enhancements and changes from the 2019 model year. Now it comes with an available 10 and a quarter inch widescreen navigation system, which works very well, I should tell you. A new center LCD information screen as well. Interior space on the Ionic is okay. It can certainly fit for adults, a five and a crunch. Certainly, uh, it is going to be a little tight in the back seat. I did find that the roof line sloping quite a lot because of the aerodynamics efficiency of the vehicle uh, does take away some headroom. I'm only 5'6", and uh, I've got about a fist of headroom here. So somebody taller than me is going to have a bit of a problem uh, bumping their head on, on it, but it's certainly adequate. Now, the meat of any electric vehicle is its electric drivetrain and components and battery packs. So let me tell you a little bit about that. For the model year 2020, it does get a larger battery pack. It's an upgraded pack that goes from 28 kilowatt hours to 38.3 kilowatt hours to be exact. That is a 36% increase in battery pack capacity. Now, EPA estimates the driving range increases from 124 miles or um, 100 to 170 miles from 199 kilometers to 273 kilometers. That's a huge jump. Puts it really in range with a lot of other vehicles that actually even potentially have uh, larger battery packs uh, like the 40 kilowatt Nissan. The onboard charger gets a boost as well from 6.6 .6 kilowatts to 7.2, so increasing a bit of charging throughput speeds. And using a 100 kilowatt fast charging station, uh, Hyundai claims that you can reach 80% in as little as 54 minutes. I'll show you my example of charging coming up later on in the episode. The electric motor has been increased to 100 kilowatts, which increases horsepower from 118 to 134 horsepower, and now uh, it climbs up to 218 pound-feet of torque, and this car has more than enough get up and go. And also it adds an additional driving mode, so you have your normal, you know, nor eco, your sport, and your normal drive modes. They add an eco plus mode, which actually limits the speed to, I believe, 90 kilometers an hour, and it really conserves energy, it lessens the amount of uh, energy that'll go to the HVAC and things like that. Um, so if you really want to be stingy on, um, on, on being a battery miser, the Eco Plus will do that for you. Now, one thing that is different for this vehicle on the interior is the touchscreen heating and cooling controls. Uh, the no more buttons to do with the HVAC. It's all touchscreen, uh, touch sensitive, and it works very well. And they've added some nice ambient lighting as well to this, uh, which seems to be the trend now for most vehicles. Now, the trunk space isn't gigantic. Um, these are the numbers as far as the size for cubic feet and liters for volume cargo space here, but certainly adequate to, to cover most daily uh, tasks. It does have your, uh, your storage compartments uh, lower. It just has the one deck. Uh, I don't believe it folds into lowering the floor, but all in all, it's adequate, but certainly not huge. The engine compartment is similar to most uh, vehicles that are born as internal combustion vehicles and then are electrified over into an electrified electrification platform and this is no exception where the, you do have an electric motor inverter the charger and and all the components in front that kind of looks like an engine even though it's not it's much smaller so this has a similar aspect so there's no frunk or any storage under the hood 
I like the design of the new Ionic. In fact, I like the old Ionic as well. It's a pleasant vehicle. It's certainly not huge. It's in a compact class. Might even actually border into the subcompact. I'd have to look that up. But it certainly does the job. And it's very streamlined in the route and, and the way that you can see the lines on this for efficiency. And that's one thing that this car really excels at is efficiency. It does have the audible warnings as well. It has both a pedestrian uh, sound. Here's that sound. This vehicle does have a backup sound as well when you put it into reverse, and this is what it sounds like. Now the model year 2020 Ionic is available in two trims. In the USA, it's the SE and the limited uh, editions or trim levels. And in Canada, we call it the preferred and the ultimate trims. In your other countries, it's going to change probably slightly, but I think the packaging is very similar. In the SE and preferred trim, you will get smart cruise control or adaptive cruise control. It does have a stop and go at it as well. So what comes standard on the base package of the eight inch uh, display audio infotainment system, uh, all packages include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support, which works really well. They all have forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection as well, added with something called Smart Sense, part of their safety technologies. Lane keeping assist, driver attention warning added as well, and high beam assist, uh, which, is, which are pretty standard features nowadays. The limited edition, or in Canada, the ultimate trim, will bump it up and add full LED headlights, a 10 and a quarter inch navigation system, and a premium auto uh, system as well from Harman Kardon. Ambient interior lighting is also added. Touchscreen uh, heating and, and cooling controls, as I mentioned uh, earlier. The highway drive assist added and lane following assist and blind spot collision avoidance with rear cross traffic collision and all that other stuff. Base price on the SE trim from the USA starts at $33,045 and that's before any state federal or other incentives that you might be able to grab. I believe this still qualifies for the U.S. federal tax credit. And in Canada, the preferred trim starts at $41,499. This vehicle does qualify for the $5,000 federal incentive, so you would get that uh, thrown in. For the limited edition, it's $38,615 U.S. In the States, in Ultimate, it's $45,899. So let's go for a quick drive in the Ionic and I'll give you my driving impressions. All right, so here are some of my driving impressions on this 2020 model year Hyundai Ionic um, with the bigger battery. But what I can say, I've been driving this car around now for a week. I'm going back and forth to work mainly. Today I'm doing a nice run so that I can get the uh, battery down enough to give it a good charge so I can show you what it'll pull. Overall driving impressions, it's a very comfortable car. The suspension is hard but not too hard soft but not too soft if you can kind of get where i'm going with that so it's just right handles the bumps well you do feel the very serious bumps uh, the ride is fairly quiet um, i clocked this at 79 to 80 decibels at 100 kilometers per hour all the instrumentation is well laid out and everything is easy access this does not have a heads-up display like some of those other models does so everything is related as far as warnings and uh, routing and stuff to the binnacle and then of course to the main display for the, the nav and things like that driving comfort that has a, uh, a power adjustable seat so i've been able i was able to find a pretty comfortable position after uh, a couple of minutes basically and of the driving it's a manual six-way control for the passenger front so so at this point, you can see I've, I've activated the um, adaptive cruise control and, uh, and I have the lane assist working and there's a very slight ping ponging. It goes back and forth ever gradually, but it doesn't get close enough to the lines. So it does go back and forth, uh, not as harsh as some of the other systems that I've seen, um, but it does do its thing. As I mentioned off the top, all the controls are easy to reach and easy to understand. It does have the paddle shifters on both sides of the steering wheels to increase the regeneration or decrease the, the regeneration, excuse me, braking. 
Now, lastly, on my drive, driving impressions, um, range. This thing so far is getting fantastic range. Now, it is a brand new vehicle. Only has, when I picked it up, uh, it had less than 13, uh, uh, just under 1,300 kilometers. Um, I'm not hearing any build quality issues as far as squeaks, rattles, moans and groans, things like that. Um, it's a very solidly built car. It feels very planted, uh, as, as it should, being a new vehicle. But so far, it's been phenomenal on range. I'm at 53% battery on a full charge. Started with 312 kilometers. That is outstanding. That's way more than the EPA uh, estimates. And um, so 312, I've done 164 kilometers, and I'm still showing 172 kilometers on the, the battery, the range indicator. Here. Right now, I'm averaging 11.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So getting 11.2, I was actually under 10 for one period of time for a bit when I was doing mainly city driving for a couple days ago, I was at 9.9. Um, so very efficient, and that's, I guess, the secret nugget here on the Koreans is, again, that efficiency. Um, that's really the wrap-up of my driving impressions. Uh, I've got more, more details and a summary coming up uh, next, uh, but before I do that, I'm going to show you um, how it's going to pull from a rapid charge, and let's see what we can get. All right, guys, well, I'm here at the uh, DC Fast Charger. It's an Electrify Canada situation, so I can try to get the most out of it. Just wanted to show you what I'm at before I plug in. Um, so I started with 312 kilometers of range showing on the GOM or on the range indicator. As you can see by my trip information, I've gone 285 kilometers, averaging 11, 11 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Um, and the range left I have is 69 kilometers, 17% battery. Well, well over the EPA. And I'm just blown away folks uh with the range now let me plug it in and see what it will pull so this is showing a 17 percent state of charge and it's telling me right now it's starting out off at 43 kilowatts as with most liquid cooled battery packs the car will make a noise when you're fast charging and it's no exception here it's making a noise the actual fan is on uh slightly and that would be the pump uh, putting the liquid through the battery while it's fast charging to keep it at optimum temperatures. All right, guys, so I'm going to shut it off. I just uh, gave it a few minutes, give it about 10 minutes or so. It's been 13 minutes. As you can see, it's at 42% pulling 48 kilowatts. Nowhere near the 100 kilowatts claimed by Hyundai on the uh, spec sheet, of course. Um, so that's a little disappointing because they did increase the charging capabilities. I thought that this would pull a bit more. Uh, you know, just to try, I am at a... Uh, 350 kilowatt capable station but I would have really hoped that this uh, 2020 model year with the bigger battery uh, would it would uh, in fact uh, they claim it's going to pull more would actually do it well my final summary on the Ionic is very positive this is a really really good car um, you know it's not as not that huge I, I kind of look at it as the Honda Civic of EVs if that makes any sense you know it's it's got that kind of styling it's got that kind of size package it seems to be very reliable. You get in the car and it just does what you want it to do. Nothing overly fancy, nothing really that's gonna stand out above the crowd, but it just goes and does it. It's a very purposeful car. And as you heard me, uh, you know, when I talked about the driving summary and the ranges that I'm getting and that, you know, the, the fast charging is a little um, disappointing, but I think because of the larger battery pack and the efficiencies, that Hyundai's been able to get on this are just outstanding. It really kind of minimizes the time that you're going to have to spend at a level three charger if you're going on a longer journey because you've got that more range to deal with. So, you know, there's pluses and minuses. Um, maybe because it's a new car, it needs some time to work in to maybe, maybe pull a little bit more charging. I don't know, but it's still not bad from that perspective. But it's, I've had no issues with this throughout the week. It's just been a very pleasant car to get in and drive, as you heard me say. Now, so the biggest thing that blew my mind in this was the range. For a battery pack of 38 kilowatts to get over 300 kilometers of range, uh, I've uh, charged this twice down to full and both times it's showing well over 300 as a starting range. And as you saw on my journey, I exceeded that immensely. And that really is the golden nugget here when you're looking at the Koreans. Tesla gets all the limelight and some of the others, I get it. You know, I understand their, their, their um, value propositions and why they are 
exciting for people. But if you're looking for an all-purpose, really reliable, good vehicle, don't, you know, don't stay away from the South Koreans. They're doing some really good things. I can't stress enough, whatever they're doing to their BMS and to their battery side of it, it's outstanding. And this only being less than 40. To get well over 300 kilometers of range is outstanding in my opinion. That's the secret. That's what I really want you to take away from, the, from this on the Koreans, especially on this uh, brand new 2020 model year. The increase that Hyundai has done for this has really shown. I could have done this whole week really in my normal driving without having to plug it in once. So I could have gone seven days back and forth to work quite easily without having to plug it in. Maybe on the seventh day I might have to plug it in. So that just shows a lot about this vehicle. Otherwise, it's nicely appointed, it's comfortable, it's not huge, so you've got to look at the ergonomics for you, but it's very comfortable and, and most people are going to find a nice fit for the 2020 model year Hyundai Ioniq. So what does it get for me? Of course, it gets a big thumbs up because I'm so happy that this is a really solid car. I was a little skeptical at first, but Hyundai, you sold me on it, so thank you very much. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My driving impressions and overview of the 2020 Hyundai Ioniq. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching on YouTube, for liking, subscribing, all that kind of stuff. Love to hear your comments. Please keep them coming. I have talked to a lot of owners that have, the, have this car and they just absolutely love it. And this is just takes it even up, up a notch to make it even better. Of course, I'm always humbled and very grateful for my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for that. You know who you are and all your names are always at the end of each episode that I do. Of course, I'm gonna to continue to, to just kind of state this on every show, stay safe. Please follow your local and government uh, health guidelines for wherever region of the world that you live in. It's very important that we continue because what we're experiencing now isn't going to go away in, in its entirety for quite some time. Mention a big thank you to Hyundai Canada for allowing me this uh, brand new test vehicle. This is one of the first model year 2020s in Ontario and they let me have it from a press perspective. I'm the first one to get it. So thank you very much for that. It's much appreciated. Everybody again, stay safe. And until the next uh, till episode that I come out with, uh, it's getting hot now, folks. I got to end this show. Everybody again, take it easy and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Thank you.